The 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China is being held here in Beijing. Rick, I really want to know how you feel about it. First of all, Sylvia, I have to tell you that I'm really glad to be here. And it's essential to review the past and plan for the future. The report, delivered by General Secretary Xi Jinping, caught my attention. And it reminded me of some of the wonderful people I've met and places I've been in China. I know you've been a witness to the new era of China. Absolutely, and I'd love to share some photos with you of places that I've been that are related to the history of the party and the country. Great. Well, here's a photo in front of the site of the first National Congress of the CPC, and I needed to take this photo in front of the door. Right. That meeting was actually held back in 1921. Wow, more than a century ago. Yes. After that, here's a photo in front of a replica of the Red Boat, and these places for where the party's dreams set sail. And you know, one of the three major events happened in the past decade is actually, according to the report, we embraced the centenary of the CPC. Well, that's definitely of historical significance. And I learned a lot about that when I went to these museums. This one in Shanghai, and this one with you in Beijing. What have you learned? What I've learned that the success of the party is based on never forgetting the founding mission of the party. One major event is we ushered in uh, a new era of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Mm, I think the key words, Sylvia, are new era, because I've been lucky to have been living in this new era in the past 10 years and seen incredible transformations and so many accomplishments. I must show you this, taken from my window. Wow. It's very cool. It's beautiful, huh? Gorgeous. To me, this represents the essence of China, preserving the old and traditional while moving towards the future. And I could see it right out of my window in Wafujing. And you watch it happen all across China, actually in the past decade. Yeah. Another historic feat is we eradicated absolute poverty, finished the building a moderately prosperous society in all respects, thus completing the first centenary goal. You know, Sylvia, that reminds me of some stories I heard when I visited a fishing village in Fujian, where for generations people lived on boats, the fishing boats. And now they're living in very comfortable apartments. Let me show you this picture. This is what their lives used to look like. And underneath, a picture that I took of a boat that they used to live on and modern apartments behind it. Wow, it's impressive to see the contrast. It's absolutely because of China's fight against poverty-led by the CPC. I remember General Secretary Xi Jinping saying in the report, the central task of the CPC is to lead Chinese people of all ethnic groups in a concerted effort to realize the second centenary goal of building China into a modern socialist country to advance the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation on all fronts through the Chinese path of modernization. Well, I think it's already in progress. I've been to many, many places and I've been to small villages in the mountains and big cities. I've seen workers in small stores and I've met executives of large companies and it seems to be a growth of support for the CPC. I've got another picture to show you and this one is myself taken next to the forbidden city in Beijing. Nice photo. Xie Carrying forward China's cultural heritage is something that really resonates with me because thousands of years of history leads to great Chinese values and Chinese culture, and I think it should carry on. I really like the saying of Chinese modernization. It is characterized by unique features to the Chinese context, like a modernization of common prosperity for all. I love that expression, common prosperity for all. In fact, I met this guy, Mr. Wu. He's known as the Abalone King, and he's living in Fujian. Well, I saw how they raise abalone, and that is sea farms that are floating on the water. Really incredible. Which reminds me of other places I've been in China. Local businesses taking care of local people and sharing the benefits. 
You've traveled a lot in the vast land of China. I know what do you think of the modernization of harmony between humanity and nature? Wow, good question. I've got a very good picture of a guy who is making documentaries about preserving a bird because a bird, the crested ibis, was almost extinct a few years ago. But now, through the efforts of Chinese, there are thousands and thousands of the crested ibis. He's got them on film. Speaking about birds and nature, this is really beautiful to see. Yeah, it's us uh, in southwest China, in Yunnan. Right, and the local people are really trying to preserve these plants. So these plants go back over a few hundred million years, back to the age of dinosaurs. So I really do respect the Chinese efforts in preserving nature, harmony. Rake, those photos from you are really great. Thanks a lot, Sylvia. I only have about 40,000 more to see. I do see you enjoyed your life here in China. Speaking about the future, what is your plan? Well, I'd absolutely love to stay. And after reading the CPC report, I like things that were mentioned like global vision, world harmony, and human progress. And I feel confident in the party and for the new journey that the Chinese people are on.